HP Labs Kumar Goswami explains why IT automation is the backbone of a cost-effective and more importantly agile, predictable, adaptive enterprise. If you look at it, the bulk of IT management is uh, very manual and labor intensive. So if you really want to reduce costs and help come up with a more cost effective way to manage your IT systems, you have to find a way to automate these IT tasks. Furthermore, if you look at these IT tasks, um, they're not really fit for human cognitive skills. Uh, some of them are repetitive and boring, some of them are very complex, and so in the process of working on these things, uh, people invariably inject errors. And now diagnosing those problems um, takes a lot more time, and it's a, a, even more huge cost, if you will. And so by automating these tasks, you're able to create an agile, repeatable, and more importantly, a very predictable IT environment, and that's what CIOs are looking for. It has a lot to do with the way we design and operate our IT systems. Um, you know, especially when you compare and contrast it to other systems, like say the autopilot system on your plane or your auto transmission in your car, these systems are closed loop. They're self-managing and automated, and they were designed to be that way from day one. Whereas our IT systems are open loop, and the state of the practice is to somehow get this thing up and running, uh, working, you test it, and then once it's running, you stand back and you pray or may proactively reboot it. Um, but that's basically the approach. And it has a lot to do with the way we write and develop and design these systems. For example, uh, when you write the software, we can't formally prove that it does what we set out to do. The error handling that we have is minimal and not well, well documented. Um, the visibility that we can provide from the software system is also uh, something that's sort of ad hoc and not designed in. So all of these things make it very difficult for us to automate and create a closed loop system. And that's why they're so manual and labor intensive today. Well, at HG Labs, what we've been doing is investigating ways to use models to drive automation. And maybe the best way to explain this is through an example. So imagine I've given you a couple of computer systems and I ask you to put this database system on top, you know, with mirroring, with high availability and so forth. Uh, probably you're going to need a user's guide to help you do that, a user's guide that describes the database system. And so you're going to read through it and eventually figure out how to do that. Well, that, that user's guide is essentially a model. It's one that a human can read and understand. Now imagine if we could take the information that's in that user's guide and put it in a form that's interpretable and readable, if you will, by a computer. If we can do that, we can then automate all those tasks that you just did manually. You can't have one monolithic model. Um, rather, you need models for each of the different parts of the IT system. So for the infrastructure, there's models that describe the infrastructures, models that describe the applications, models that describe the business services that you're finally trying to actually create. Um, and these models aren't new, they exist today. For example, the SIM model, the Common Information Model, it's a DMTF standard, Distributed Management Task Force standard, um, and so it's available today. We are now investigating how we can use these models to manage the entire life cycle of the services. Um, and here we're talking about from designing the service. Now realize the service consists of you know, a bunch of application components. So figure out what components you need, where they need to reside, what machines they should be allocated on. And then once we have that, how can we automatically provision all of those components? And then once they're actually running, how do we make sure in an automated fashion that they are meeting the service level objectives um, that we had set out to meet? Um, and within that, we're looking at automated ways to diagnose things when things go wrong, um, to be able to proactively do capacity planning and add more system components as necessary, and use things like control theoretic approaches to do more closed-loop control of these systems. Diagnosis is a very difficult problem for, uh, for our customers. Um, you know, they get tremendous amounts of data from applications and from the systems, and they're under pressure when the system is not working properly to be able to diagnose what the issue is and fix it in a timely fashion. And so we are working on automated techniques to help facilitate this process. We're using statistical and machine learning techniques to help you basically sift through the data, the hundreds of metrics that you have, and figure out which are the ones to focus on. So given a specific service level objective, say a response time, we are able to tell you, instead of the 500 metrics, look at these few, less than 10 metrics, and it'll tell you where the issues are and whether an issue is going to be taking place or not. 
In addition, we've developed technologies where we can actually take a digital snapshot of the system when it's in a bad state and then compare it with previous snapshots to see if this particular problem occurred in the past and if so, how it was resolved. So these are sort of machine learning and statistical techniques to help automate and speed up the process of diagnosis. We test drive all of our technologies uh, with customers or with HP's own IT department. So in one pilot um, uh, with HP IT, we use automated tools to help generate their monthly capacity planning reports uh, for a production system that they have. And uh, it was taking them about a week each month to do this. So when we brought in our technologies and our tools, we not only brought that down to a few hours, uh, but we were able to provide much more in-depth and more accurate analysis. Automation is the backbone of a cost-effective and more importantly agile, predictable, adaptive enterprise. And so the technologies that we've been working on are getting incorporated into the tools that we sell at HP. And so I think the best thing to do would be to contact your HP rep um, and of course you're always urged to visit hp.com as well.